Okay, hello everybody. Back again with yet another round. Uh, before I start this round, I want to clarify the shooting. Uh, because in the last round, Wanda here, she used her shotgun, which had two dice, to shoot. And when she shot, she got two successful hits. And I took off two zombies. Now, I think the book states that if you're in the same zone as those zombies, you're shooting at one of those zombies with both those dice. So I would have hit it with one, and the other one would have been wasted. Yet, in the next passage, the book says, when you're shooting at range, if you're shooting with two dice, and you've got two walkers in here, and your character is in this zone, you're actually hitting them both. So, I can't understand why um, that rule doesn't apply if you're on the same square. Because as far as I'm concerned, um, if you're in the same zone and you're shooting with a shotgun with two dice, the first one hits the kills the zombie, and because it's powerful, the second dice, uh, effectively the second type bullet, will go through that zombie and hit the other one and kill them off. Um, some people are saying no, um, if you've got two dice to attack something at close range, then you've got two chances to get that one hit and kill what you're aiming at. Um, but I'm not playing it that way. I'm playing it the way that if you've got two dice, that's two potential hits. The only way that that would be different from the way I play it is if you have, um, like we see here, Josh. He's got two machetes, which means he gets loads of dice in close combat. But because he's swinging the machetes at one target, um, that would be different. So if he hit um, the target with two dice and there was two zombies there, he's still only taking out one zombie because he's concentrating both his swinging actions on that one target. It was shooting um, in close proximity, the bullets would just go everywhere. Um, same as thing with the machine gun, because bullets are just going to spray out. So you're going to hit multiple targets. And that is why I've done it that way. Um, obviously it's up to the individual who plays the game. They might want to do it differently. But uh, for the sake of these videos, this is how I'm going to do it. So with that cleared up, um, we'll start with the next phase. So first of all, just take all the sound markers off. And we move token up to the first person who is going to move, which is going to be Amy. Now Amy's in the ship because she's got all these walkers and the abomination on top of her. Now Amy has got four actions because she's in the yellow so she's got an extra action plus she's also got that one free move action so potentially she could move five times which would be one two three four five so she'd still be staying in the same slot because she needs five actions to get away so she really needs six to move away so what she's going to do with her first action she's going to shoot with her two sawn off shotguns at close range so that's four dice remember she can only attack the walkers she can't take away the abomination so the first of her actions is going to be shooting so with any luck she could get a full house of four She's only got one. So one of these has gone. That's a noise token. And we'll move her up the track. So she's now up to 13. For her second action, she has to reload. So she's reloaded. She's now going to use her third action to shoot again. So this needs to be a lot better. And she's got four and a five and two threes. And she needs um, a three or more to hit. So she's actually got a full house. So she's got a full house. She's got four hits. So all three of them are gone. Bang. The effects doesn't affect 
this guy. She shot them all together, so again I'm only going to put one marker, but she's got three hits. So she's now gone up to 16. So she's only two, three more hits away from orange. But the good news is, she saved herself. And now that was shoot, reload, shoot. She has one extra action. If you use that to move away, she has one free move, which she got with the blue. So she's using that to move. So I believe that is right. So she's got herself out of a tight spot there. So that's good news for, for Amy. We've now got Doug. Now Doug is in there. His first action is to take that. That's another objective. And with, with the objective, you have to get five experience points. So he's now up to six. That's why I had him take it, because he's low. So that's one action for Doug. So he's got two actions left. One of those is going to be searching. I haven't done this for a while. Now he's got a flashlight. This means pick one extra card when searching. This card is effective even in reserve. So he can use this straight away. Pick an extra card. So he's got a slot available. So at the moment that is in the slot. So he's now going to pick an extra card for searching. And it's water. He doesn't want it. So he's throwing it away. But he's got a searchlight, which means every time he searches, he can choose another search card. So effectively, he's, um, I presume he's, a, he's searching twice. He actually gets to search twice. Um, well, I'll think about that when he comes around to doing it again. So that's two um, actions he's done. He's got a third action. He's going to stay where he is because he's a bit of a coward, Doug. He's only an office worker. So we now move down to Ned. And Ned is also in there. Now, Ned's got a decision to make. Shall he search? He has a free search action. So he's going to use his free search action. And he's got a machete. Now Ned is fully armed up. So what he's going to do, he's going to throw away his bag of rice. And he's going to keep the machete. So maybe if somebody else gets a machete, he can trade with them and they'll have dual weapons. So that was his free action for his blue. Now he's got four actions because he's in the yellow so he gets an extra action for being in the yellow. So his second action, because he's got a rifle, he's going to move out here and he's going to, that's his second action. Now he's had a free action of serving, uh, searching, so that's his first action. His second action he's going to shoot with his rifle. So he's got one dice, he's got to get three or more got two so he's missed but he's created sound so he's now got two more actions so he's gonna have another shot missed again now the noise token his final action because he gets one extra for being in yellow remember five he's finally done it he gets another always noise token but he's got rid of a zombie and that has pushed him now up to nine on the rung. So not bad from Doug. Ah, from Ned, sorry. So we've got two left. We've got Wanda and Josh. So we're now going to do Wanda. So she is going to search. Might as well since she's in a room. And she has a pistol. And she has a free slot. So she'll put the pistol in the free slot. 
So that's her first action. Because she's in the yellow, she gets an extra action. So she's still got three actions left. So she could move out. Um, and she has a shotgun. So what she's going to do, going to be, that's her second action. That's her third action. Fourth action, she's going to shoot her shotgun at that zombie there. She gets two dice, and she's got to get a four or more. She's got it. So that zombie is gone. She's got noise. And she's gone up to 16 now. So she's getting pretty close to the next zone. So that's Wanda done. We've now got Josh. Now there's Josh there. Now Josh is also on yellow, so he gets an extra action. So he gets four moves. Four actions. So one action is to go in there. Second action is to search. And they finally got the glass bottle. Now he's got a full pack. So he's going to throw away the water. And he's got the glass bottle. Now he's got two actions left. Now Amy has the um, gasoline. But he can't move out of there and trade with Amy. There is a zombie visible. You cannot trade when there is a zombie visible. I think that's what it says. Or it's uh, zomb no. When there's a zombie in the same room, you can't trade. But I'm going to say if there's a zombie visible, you can't trade as well. So that was his second action. His third action. He's going to stay where he is because Amy's going to move in there and trade with the Molotov. I think to get the Molotov. So that was good from Josh. That was the end of their go. So we can now hopefully finally get rid of this guy or possibly just throw it in and get rid of that lot. Just keep avoiding this guy. I'll have to see. So we now move on to the zombie phase and as always it's attack. So what we do, we'll start with this guy as always. Sounds there and there. He moves because he can see them. So he's now in the same zone as them. We will now deal with this one. Because you can see Wanda, it's going to move. All these will move to the nearest sound. So they've all got to move one. I should make sure there's no runners there. There's no runners there. This guy gonna move to the nearest sound, so he moves one. And now all we've got left is this bunch. Now all the sound is located around here, so they're all going to move around here anyway. I'll just move all the sound markers off the board at the moment. It saves me doing it on my next round, because uh, they're getting in the way. So all this lot, six, eight, that's ten zombies in one slot. So you can imagine what the Molotov will do there. So that's them all moved. So now it's the spawning phase. So we start with that room, that one first. Three walkers. That isn't good. This zone doesn't matter as much because it's a long way off. So we'll spawn on that. Two runners. Now we have things are starting to get a bit hairy now. So you've got two runners for the first time. This zone down here. It's two more runners. Just, uh, 
getting them out of the box here. So we have two more runners on that zone. And finally this zone. That is what we didn't want. Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse. So all the fatties now get to have an extra turn. We have two fatties here. So extra turn is attack. There isn't any. Let's just move these up a bit. So they move. Both those fatties move up. So that's a little bit harder for the survivors now. At least nothing was spawned there. But say they've got the Molotov, well they will have, so they can just destroy that. So now we've got three here, so it's going to be harder for these to move. So that was the end of that go. Um, I'll leave it there for that video and hopefully in the next video I will do two moves and it should be getting pretty close within the next six or seven moves to finishing the game. Um, I think there's going to be some hits coming up within the next round or two on the survivors. Don't forget Josh has been wounded so we've got to protect Josh and Wanda still has the ski mask and that protects her against a wound so she could potentially take a wound and be okay so until the next video thanks for watching and I'll catch you later